Hi, I'm Sarah, I'm 11, and my religion is Islam. This is my life. I can't talk. Uh... Hello, baby. Even if I'm like an adult, I will not be able to resist bounce cars. My hobbies include hanging out with my friends and making things. These are just little flowers and bows and things that I've made with some moustache. I've made a glove. It's kind of useless because I haven't made the other one yet. My dad's from Algeria, so I grew up a Muslim. It's a big part of my life. Right now I'm fasting during the daylight hours for the holy month of Ramadan. It's quite difficult sometimes, but then when you, just when you finish eating dinner, you realize how easy it was. It's something all Muslims must do, if they can, under the five pillars of Islam. I'm taking part this year to show I'm ready to become a young Muslim woman. I really want to be like a fashion designer when I'm older. Yeah, and Adam's wearing a polo shirt and then some shorts from somewhere. Do some modeling, babe. Come on. See, look, he's a model. He's a model. I could just do like a cocoa cam. I've been wearing my hair out a lot recently because I'm going to wear a headscarf soon. I'm also preparing to start wearing the Muslim headscarf, the hijab, full time like my mum. No, I don't, I don't want to cream one, I don't think. It's going to be a big change for me, but it feels right as I devote myself more to my faith. Who invented knotted up hair? Probably God. So yeah, maybe I should go now. Islam is the second largest religion in the world, after Christianity. It has more than one and a half billion followers, called Muslims. In Islam, we believe that there's only one God, and Allah is the Arabic word for God. Muslims believe that God revealed his holy scriptures to a prophet on earth, and his words are recorded in the Quran. To understand what it's like to be a Muslim, you need to understand the five pillars of Islam. These are five ways our religion makes a difference to how we live our lives. They're like duties of a Muslim because every Muslim needs to do all of these things in their lifetime. The first pillar is Shahada, the basic statement of the Islamic faith. Um, in Arabic it's Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. I bear witness that Allah is the one and only God and Muhammad is his messenger. It's really important to like believe in the words that you say because it's just like the declaration of becoming a Muslim. The second is Salah, the five set times during the day when Muslims must pray. The first prayer happens before sunrise. The last one is between sunset and midnight. You're not expected to do all five prayers until you're 12, but I like to try. I've decided to start doing them already because it's good for practice for when I'm an adult, so it's not a complete shock. Um, I've prayed the early one like quite a few times, but I haven't started doing it like every day yet, but I'm going too soon. <laughs> the third pillar of Islam is zakah, which means giving money, usually to charity. Muslims must give away 2.5% of their savings every year. Millions of pounds are given by UK Muslims to help needy people all over the world. It's a really important thing in our religion because some people don't have as much money as us and some people don't have food and water and it's important to give them money to do that. The fourth pillar of Islam is called Salm. It means to fast during daylight hours for the month of Ramadan. It's not just about like eating and drinking, it's also about being a little bit more spiritual because I know definitely, me, I'm always snacking on food. And then when you don't eat food, it just helps you stop thinking about that and just being a bit more spiritual. The fifth and final pillar of Islam is Hajj. This is when Muslims from all over the world gather in the holiest city of Islam, Mecca in Saudi Arabia. It's where the Prophet Muhammad came from. It's basically a pilgrimage um, that every Muslim needs to make um, at least once in their lifetime. 
The five pillars of Islam are the basis of Muslim life and how we put our faith into action. I think it's because it's kind of like a metaphor because pillars like hold things up. So like if you do these five things then it will hold you up and like make you a good Muslim. <laughs> Hajj is a pilgrimage all Muslims are expected to do once in their life, if they can. Every year, more than three million Muslims make the journey to Mecca, in Saudi Arabia, to praise God or Allah together. It's the largest annual gathering of people on earth. The crowd is so big, it would fill Wembley Stadium more than 40 times. Mecca is so special because it's the place where the Prophet Muhammad was born and received his first message from God. It's such a holy place, only Muslims are allowed in. My family are saving up for the Hajj and I want to find out more about what it's like. So I'm meeting Mary Batul al Torma, a tour guide for Muslim pilgrims from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, sir. The first time you went to Hajj, what were your first impressions and what did you do? What really was quite awesome was the fact that I was in the midst of about three and a half million mm, people yeah. for my, the first time in my entire life. Yeah. The atmosphere is wonderful mm -hmm. and you've got people from all over the world, from Malaysia, Indonesia, Turkey, uh, South Africa, the Middle East, you know, Europe, yeah. America, Canada. So it's really, really quite exciting. So tell us what happens when you go to Hajj and when you're doing it. Hajj is a very important rite of passage for Muslims. So you go to Mecca and this little cube-like building here is what we call the Kaaba. It's very significant in the sense that it signifies the oneness of God and that we as Muslims all around the world, wherever we are, we all pray towards the Kaaba, signifying the oneness of God. The Kaaba is at the centre of the Grand Mosque in Mecca and it's the holiest site in Islam. It's the one place all Muslims turn towards when they pray, wherever they are in the world. During the Hajj, millions of Muslims walk around the Kaaba seven times anti-clockwise to submit to Allah. This is a piece of the cloth that covers the Kaaba. Uh, because it signifies God and God's house, we as Muslims want to elevate it and respect it as yeah. such. It's cleaned every year and then it's covered every year with a new cloth. And this particular pattern is drawn out and is sewn into the cloth with gold thread. Real gold. Real gold thread. That's amazing. Yeah. So there are lots of people who spend the entire year of their lives um, making this cloth for the Kaaba. Start off the next stage of the Hajj is to walk or run seven times between the hills of Safa and Marwa. By the time you've done the circuit of the Kaaba and done Safa and Marwa, you have walked probably about three, three and a half, four, five kilometers. Oh, that's a lot. So it's, it's quite a lot. Then the pilgrims travel to the plain of Arafat, which is where the Prophet Muhammad delivered his last sermon. And Arafat, it's the most important day. It's the day when Muslims seek forgiveness from God for all their past, you know, Sins. little mistakes. Yeah. And they pray to God for a good life, to be able to try to think very carefully about how they live their lives in the best way possible. Finally, the pilgrims return to Mecca and perform one last important ritual. On their way there, they stop at what we call the Jamarat, which are big stone pillars, and represents the kind of bad omens of this world and, you know, the, the, the temptations yeah. of getting back into bad habits. So what we do, we take these little pebbles and we throw them at the Jamarat. 
It's about physically rejecting yeah. all the bad that might come and sort of tempt us to do wrong. Uh, and then we walk into Mecca to, to do our circumambulation of the Kaaba again. And this is all walking, Sarah. Mm -hmm. So this is a That's very, hard. it is hard, especially because it's so hot. The Hajj takes place in temperatures of more than 30 degrees Celsius. Batul's job is to help look after people so they don't get lost or become ill from the heat. A trip like this takes a lot of planning. This is the dress for Muslim men who go on Hajj, and it's two very large pieces of white toweling, OK? So it's like, it's like a great big bath towel. All Muslim pilgrims wear ihram, special clothes that unite them as equals before Allah. They put one part of this around their waist, and then they pop the other one around their around the top part of their body and their shoulders. And what do the women wear? The women wear uh, usually just one straight, loose kind of dress. It can be any colour. Lots of women like to wear white because the men wear white, uh, but it can be any colour. As long as they're covered and, and uh, they maintain their, their respect, that's all they're asked to do. The Hajj pilgrimage is one of the best things you can do as a Muslim. Every Muslim dreams of going. I think Hajj is going to be a really spiritual thing to do. The fact that you see like three and a half million people, that's quite overwhelming. It would be a really spiritual moment and I, really, I would really enjoy it. Hi, my name's Kaisan. I'm with the filming crew in my kitchen, in my house. <laughs> Kaisan lives in East London. He and his mate Naeem try to live by the teachings of the Muslim holy book, the Quran. And this is my best mate Naeem. Hey, I'm Naeem and I love football. We do a lot of stuff together, we play together, we do our work together. They're 12 years old and have been learning the Quran for more than five years. Naeem has memorized about 14 chapters. That's almost half, and it's all in Arabic. Well done, we only got like one mistake here, so that's all you have to fix. Muslims believe God has sent many messengers to people over the centuries to guide us and teach us how to follow the one true God. Muhammad was the last and final prophet. Muhammad was a spiritual man who lived in Mecca more than 1,400 years ago. One night he was meditating in a cave on the mountains when he was visited by the angel Gabriel, also known as Jibril, who began to reveal messages from Allah. The angel Jibril, he gave um, a revelation to him. Allah told um, that angel to go to him and reveal bits of the Quran to him so he would spread the word to other people. The words were remembered and recorded in the Quran. They are the basis of Islam and teach Muslims how to follow the one true God. In the Quran, you have like little things that kind of make a big difference, like little lessons that we learn, don't lie or speak nicely to your parents. So we try to learn these stuff and these characters from um, our Prophet. It's important to learn the Quran in the original Arabic it was written in, but you can understand the main messages through English translations. Give thanks to Allah. Whoever gives thanks does so for the good of his own soul, meaning thank God for all the good things in life. Whoever brings God a good deed will receive ten times as much, meaning we believe God rewards our good deeds. And you believers don't say one thing and do another. That is most hateful in the sight of God. To say one thing, then do the opposite, meaning in Islam living out what you believe matters. You must be clean to handle the Quran, and out of respect, never leave the Quran on the floor. The Quran to me is like really important because um, it's the words of God, and Islam is a way of life. It's not only a religion, but um, it tells you how to live life. It's like little lessons that we learn, um, and stuff like manners and stuff. These things come from the Quran, so uh, we can learn these lessons and we can implement it in our life.
12-year-old Kaisan goes to the East London Mosque with his dad. A mosque, or in Arabic, masjid, is a Muslim place of worship. Every year, 1.6 million people come here to pray, study, or just hang out and learn more about Islam. During holy times like Ramadan, some Muslims even sleep here. Muslims, male and female, they go to pray five times a day. They go to the mosque to learn from the Imam, to learn the Quran, to learn how to worship God, to learn how to become human beings. We believe that the mosque is the heart of the community. You won't find any pictures of God or the Prophet Muhammad in a mosque or holy shrine because images of their faces are considered disrespectful. But you will often find the most amazing Islamic architecture. Mosques are so important, they're even mentioned in the Muslim holy book, the Quran. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that whoever builds a mosque for God, a masjid, in this world, then God will build for him a mansion in paradise. Men and women have separate prayer halls at the mosque. At his mosque, Kaisan prays with his dad in the men's section. During prayers, everyone faces the Qibla, a niche in the wall pointing towards the Kaaba in the holy city of Mecca. There's a verse in the Quran which Allah says, the whole world has been made a mosque for you. So it's like, if you're anywhere, you can always pray. Kaisan's old enough to perform Salat, the Muslim prayer ritual, five times a day. Like all Muslims, before he prays or touches the Muslim holy book, the Quran, he makes sure he's clean. This is the washing ritual, wudu. So first, um, you turn on the tap and you wash your right hand three times up to the wrist, and then your left three times up to the wrist. You then gurgle some water in your mouth three times. You then sniff some water in your nose. After that, you um, wash your face from your forehead to your earlobes, to your chin. Um, you wash your arms until your elbow, your right hand first, then your left hand three times. You then uh, wipe your head all the way and come back down and you can um, put some water in your ear and then you go into washing your foot. It's important to be clean for prayer because um, prayer is a form of speaking to God. So um, you want to be clean with him because he's the creator, so he deserves to be like worshipped clean. So your right foot first up to your ankle. Make sure that the water touches in between your toes and your ankle. You are now ready to pray or to do other certain acts of worship where you need to be purified. Muslims can pray anywhere. It doesn't have to be in a mosque. But no matter where you are in the world, you always face towards the same place, the Kaaba in the city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. You just have to know which direction it's in. If you're anywhere, you can always pray. You just have to like, figure out the direction of Mecca. So uh, you put a compass on the floor and check how many degrees it is. The first action of prayer is your intention. So you go, you stand on the prayer mat and you think, what, who are you praying to and what are you praying? And you raise your hands like this and then you say, Allahu Akbar. And once you've said that, you've started your prayer. When you're making the intention, um, you're remembering that God is in front of you and he's listening to you while you're praying. He can hear you and he's listening and he'll respond. We do a set number of actions in a certain order. And it's to like unite your mind and soul and body all together. The first thing I say in my mind is Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This means in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Um, there are 99 names of Allah, um, all of them, they all describe him. But one of my favourite names is probably Al-Khaliq, 
which means the creator. That really has like a big impact on the way I like live life and refer to him as because like when you when you pray, you, if you think he's the creator, you don't have any other like um, doubts or anything. You just know he's the creator, so he just deserves to be prayed to. When Muslims kneel down in prayer, only the palms, knees, forehead and nose touch the ground. At the end of the prayer ritual, we bless the two angels who keep an eye on us and everything we do. There's um, one angel on like your right shoulder and one left. The angel that records the good deeds is on your right and the angel that records your bad deeds is on the left. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, you feel this kind of connection with Allah, like you're talking to him. The morning prayer is really um, early in the morning, so that can get a bit tiring, but you shouldn't think, oh, now it's prayer time. You should think, like, yes, it's prayer time, so now I can pray. <laughs> feeling of um, everyone is doing the same thing and you're all praying to the same God um, in the same way, in the same language. The way that you call uh, a Muslim a brother and a Muslim lady a sister. It's like, yeah, it's like you have a connection with everyone and like, you feel like all the Muslims are together and you're praying to like one thing. So it feels like really united. The prayer ritual is over 1,400 years old. It's repeated five times a day by millions of Muslims like Kaisan all over the world. It's the month of Ramadan and I've been fasting for 21 days. That means no food or water during daylight hours. This is one of the five pillars of Islam, so Muslims must do it if they can. The whole point of fasting is so that you stop thinking about things like food and then you be a bit more spiritual. Fasting is supposed to teach us self-discipline and to remind us to think about other people around the world who are too poor to afford food. I'm always snacking on things and when you don't eat food, it just like, makes you realise how other people feel when the people who don't have food. I don't have to fast until I'm a bit older, but this year I've been practising to show my devotion to God and my religion. When Ramadan falls in summer, the days are really long. This year we can't eat until 9 o'clock at night. This is shorba. It's a soup from Algeria. My dad is it's from... Algeria? Yes, tradition. They always have shorba. Ramadan. Okay, can you pass me the chicken, please? Thank you. We're going to put all of it. How many days have we fasted so far? Um, 20 something. Through all these days fasting, your stomach tends to shrink. And even though you feel, oh, we're going to eat this, I'm going to eat that. Yeah. I can't wait for this, I can't wait for that. You can't really eat that much. When the sun sets, it's time to break our fast. <laughs> Ramadan falls on the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and lasts for around 30 days. It was during Ramadan all those years ago when the words of the holy book, the Quran, were first revealed by God. Ramadan isn't just about fasting. Many Muslims spend more time praying and reading the Quran. And almost all try to give up bad habits. The end of Ramadan is marked with one of the most holy festivals of the year. It's currently half past one in the morning. I eat tomorrow, so we're excited for that. At Eid al-Fitr, Muslims all over the world get together to pray and party, like at these festivals in London. Eid al-Fitr! We're here today celebrating a Muslim celebration called Eid. It's a fun fair, and I'm not sure what rides we got. But 
Eid is also a time to reflect and feel close to God. So it's thanking God for having the strength to do the fast, thanking God for that opportunity, thanking God for his forgiveness because forgiveness and salvation are things upon great acts of worship. It's something that we expect. The most profound form of gratitude to God is prayer. Right? So we begin our gratitude with prayer. And the rest of the day is about family, you know, it's about eating lots of food, especially in the Eid al-Fitr one after a month of hunger, right? This year is a big year for me. Jumper. I've moved up to secondary school with one of my best friends, India, and I've started wearing the Muslim headscarf, the hijab, all the time when I'm out. Selfie. It was the decision I made as part of my faith. No, I like that one. That one's better than the other one. What was it like first wearing a headscarf, like first going to high school wearing it? I was a little bit nervous, but. I guess every year seven is a bit nervous when they go to high school. It's just because I, I was so different because I, I was wearing a headscarf. But yeah, like I remember when I first saw you coming in, I, I knew you were, but I just sort of forgot in the moment. Mm. But like, now I'm used to it. <laughs> the word hijab comes from the Arabic for veil. It describes headscarves worn by many Muslim women. When they pray, some men also cover their heads and wear modest clothes that reach the knees. Wearing a headscarf kind of shows that I'm proud to be a Muslim because it's something that I'm like sacrificing. I'm like giving up like doing hairstyles and, and stuff like that for my religion. I've changed a lot this year. I think 12 would be my favorite age because you're still like a little child, but you're not really like a teenager yet. So I've changed a lot, but I'm still pretty much the same person. Being Muslim is not just about believing in God. It's also about being a good person. Like, you can't just believe in God and not be a good person and call yourself a good Muslim. You have to be a good person as well. Um, nice meeting you. Bye. Bye. Bye.